For those of you that are new here, that don't know us, may not know everything we teach, <clears throat> one of our primary teachings is that we do not believe in the traditional rapture of the church as the Christian church teaches it. We do believe in a catching away, but we don't believe in the rapture. So somebody explain, what do I mean by that? We do believe in the catching away, but not the rapture. Elder Morgan. We'll, be, we'll get our glorified bodies and we'll, we'll be caught up into the air. Amen. In an instant, of an eye, we'll escort our king right. down to his Amen. kingdom. So why is that not the rapture? Because the rapture says we're all vacuumed away into a place called heaven. Okay. And, uh, and according to the Christian church, that will happen before Yahshua returns, yes. seven years prior. Yeah. Okay. That's where we're different. We do believe we're going to meet the Lord in the air. Amen. Amen. We do believe that. I mean, that's the Bible. You have to believe that. We are going to meet the Lord, but, it, but for some reason in our minds, when we hear air, we think heaven. You know, but no, it's the atmosphere. It's the air. Uh, remember, there are three heavens, the first, second, and third heaven. Now, the believers, from what I can read in the Bible, uh, from what my study has proven to me, the believers were never intended to go to the third heaven. But we will be going to the first heaven, and then after eternity, we'll probably be going to the second heaven, uh, which would be uh, the universe. But anyway, so the problem is when you start teaching about the rapture, and I always believed in the premillennial rapture growing up in the denomination that we grew up in, they believe in what's called the premillennial rapture. And that's what Perry Stone believes. That's what uh, pretty much everybody believes in Christianity. Now, the reason they believe that is they have a heaven mentality. Okay? If you think we're all going to heaven, then why not just go ahead and have a rapture and get us all up there? Absolutely. So therefore, when they read the verses of Scripture that we're about to tear apart, their minds, if that you're right, they can't help it. If I'm a mechanic, which I'm not, but if I were, I would filter everything through the mechanic's mind. I'm a preacher, so I filter everything through sermons and, you know, writing books. So if I, if I see uh, something in nature, automatically I start filtering that through my theological mind. Somebody else might see that same thing and they're filtering it through their mechanical or so we've all got a mindset. That mindset was created in our Christian upbringing. Now, the verse that they use, and here's what they will tell you, and we're about to read that verse. The minute you tell them there's not a rapture, no, brother, it's going to be two in the bed, one's going to be taken, one's going to be left. Oh, everybody, anybody ever heard that? Okay. Okay. That's the verses we're going to deal with today and find out what those verses really mean. And I believe when you see it, you're going to be like, how did I not see that before? Let's go to Matthew 24. By the way, if there is going to be a rapture, it's running a little late because it's about time for the Lord to return. Amen. Amen. Here's the deal. The Christian church does not separate the rapture. You've got the rapture and then you've got the second coming of Christ. Okay, here's the problem. The Bible only talks about three, I mean two comings of Christ. But if you're a Christian that believes in the rapture, you have to believe in three. The first coming, this one when he comes and meets him in the air, and then a second coming. And uh, you just can't have it both ways. There is no, I'm going to say this emphatically, there is not one scripture in the Bible I've ever found that tells us there's going to be a rapture. Amen. None. Amen. I've never Amen. found one. Amen. Now, the one they think they found is not true, and I'll show you why in a minute. So I ask anybody watching me, well, we're not live right now except for the Zoom, but if there's anyone that can show me our scripture 
that says we're going in the rapture before the Lord returns, before Yahshua returns. I begged, I begged, I've never seen one. And yet the whole church believes that. As a matter of fact, the most popular Christian book was called Left Behind. Yeah. Yeah. The whole thing was a lie, yeah. total lie. And the whole church loved it. But the truth is, uh, that's just not the way it's going to happen. Let's find out how it is going to happen. Matthew 24, verse 40. Would you hand me my glasses, son, right there? Uh, off the desk. You want me to read that? Yes, sir, go ahead. Thank you. Matthew 24, and Matthew 24 and 40. through 41. Then shall two be in the field, and one shall be taken, and the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill, and one shall be taken, and the other left. Is that both verses? Okay. What is your mind, if you just take those two verses, what does your mind automatically see happening? <laughs> Two's in the bed, one, and one's left in the bed. Two men's out working. I mean, how many heard the stories that you're going to be driving down the road and the driver's going to disappear and you might be riding in the car and the driver's gone? <clears throat> you better hope your airplane pilot ain't going in the rapture. So, now, I mean, you know, we laugh about it, but that is, that's what all Christianity believes. That's what everybody believes. And they believe it from them, those two verses. And if you think think we're going to heaven I could see where you would filter those verses through a let's get out of here and let's go to heaven that's right but we must become earthly in understanding all God's plan the year of jubilee which I didn't even get to teach on today the year of jubilee is all right here on earth and when you understand that then you read scriptures like that and you're like what does those scriptures really mean so let's see if we can't dig. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's see if we can't dig in and find. Bring me back up where I was. There we go. Find the meaning of these verses. First of all, you always have to find your, what is king? What have I always taught you is king. Context is king. So the first thing we need to do is find our context. Well, you're not going to find the context in verse 40 and verse 41. That is called, if you want to put this in your notes. Amen. If you want to put this in your notes, the difference in um, eisegesis and exegesis. E I S O. G-E-S-I-S. -S. That's called eisegesis. That's a, that is a way that some people study the scriptures eisegetically, as we call it. What is eisegesis? It's where you tell me, no, Brother Vaughn, there is a rapture. It says it right here in verse 40 and verse 41. You have isolated two scriptures. And you expect me to shut up and let you say you've won the argument. Because of two scriptures, exegesis is when you exegete it. It's when you take the whole of the Word of God and make it all line up. Now, when I, exactly, when I go from Genesis to Revelation, I don't see a rapture anywhere. Number one, I just look at the children of Israel in the Torah. When Yahweh, but Brother Vaughn, we're not created for wrath. That's another scripture they use. You know, we're not, we're not cre created for it. You are, <laughs> if your Torah is the example, the children of Israel suffered the wrath of Pharaoh. We're going to suffer the wrath of the Antichrist. But they didn't suffer the wrath of God. And neither will you. There will be seven years of the tribulation. The first three and a half, the Bible said many of you will be killed during that time. Amen. And if any church tells you otherwise, you're not going to have the faith to make it through. Let me tell you what's going to happen when the rapture doesn't take place. There's going to be a great falling away. 
because they're going to believe if that was a lie, it's all a lie. Okay? And they're not going to be able to endure those hard years. Three and a half years of struggle upon the earth. The next three and a half years is when Yahweh pours out his wrath. Now you are promised protection during those years. You're promised to be sealed. <clears throat> he said, don't hurt the grant, don't hurt nothing until you seal my prophet, my, my servant. Okay? Now, why does that make sense, Elder Baker? Because it lines up perfectly with what happened to the children of Israel. Go ahead. Yes. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. No, it, I, I, is that a terminology thing with me? It's like, it, oh my gosh, it's sure. I, I would call that the falling away, but I wouldn't label it the great falling away. There's a there's a falling away that's coming soon, where people are just going to give up everywhere. It's already happening, but it's just like the Antichrist is already here. Yeah. Okay, you follow what I'm. But there will be a great Antichrist. I know it's like a balloon blowing up. And we're in the blowing of that. So if Israel is, let's, let's go to Noah. Yahweh poured out his wrath on the earth. Did he rapture Noah or protect Noah? That's right. Right here on the earth. Now my question is in AD 70, right after Christ died, 40 years later, Yahweh poured out destruction on Jerusalem. What did Yahshua tell those disciples? Pray that when that happens, that your flight not be on the Sabbath day or in the winter. Flee to the mountains. Okay? Protection. So students, right now I'm just calling you students because I'm just teaching you now. If we have all of these examples, we beg to question. What makes your generation worthy of a rapture? Right. Come on, Amen. Yes, what did you do? Amen. They didn't get one. And there's no new thing under the there's no, so why do you get one? Why do you get a rapture? Could I just say, who do you think you are? You want a rapture because you don't want to suffer. So you want a rapture. I've heard people say, I'm getting out of here. Well, what happens when you don't? But we still have these two scriptures that really bother us. And we need an answer to it. So let's find our context, okay? To do that, we've got to scroll up to verse 36. I'm going to start writing on the board. And I'm going to show you the context of these verses. Let's start at verse 36. But that day, not... Hold on, hold on, hold on. Your context is that day. Would anybody like to tell me when that day is, what day that is? The seventh day, the Sabbath day, or the 7,000th year, the day of the Lord. This has nothing to do, he, Yahshua is not even talking about the rapture. He's talking about that day. Okay? Now, what he's saying is in that day, two will be in the bed. Well, if we're in that day, the rapture should have happened seven years earlier. The whole context is about that day. And I've taught you for years what that day is. We're celebrating it right now. That day. Read. That day and hour knoweth no man. No, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. All right, now let's scroll up one more, go to verse 35, and let's see if we can find what that day is. Read. Heaven and earth shall pass away. All right. This is a time when heaven and earth shall pass away. This is not the rapture. So there's another context. Heaven and earth passes away. Ladies and gentlemen, that happens at the beginning of that day. This is after nuclear war, after World War III, when the heavens, the atmosphere, not literal heaven, but everything will be destroyed. 
Yahshua said, what I'm fixing to talk to you about is not about some rapture. It's about that day when heaven and earth passes away. So if you'll get your context right, as you scroll down, we'll find more context. Let's go to verse 37. So what is this talking about? The second coming of Christ. Because Yahshua comes at this exact moment when that day begins. All right, now let's read verse 37. Okay, here's another hint. Here's another hint. Now we got Noah in the mix. I just told you Noah wasn't raptured. All right? Now, we've got that day, heaven and earth passing away, the second coming, and now we're going to talk about Noah. Read. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man there it is. The coming. See, why do they automatically say that's the rapture? The coming of the Son of Man is not the rapture. Come on. Hallelujah. The coming of the Son of Man is that day when heaven and earth pass away. He said, and I'm going to compare that day to Noah's day. Amen. I'm going to compare these two days now. Noah's day. And that day. And now, go over and read that one more time, verse 37. For as in the days that were before the flood. So we're going to compare. We're comparing the days before the flood. Now we're going to compare it to the days before that day. All right? Let's read verse number. Hold on one second. I may wait. Go to 38. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the Hold day. on. So before Noah's, before the wrath of Yahweh fell out, they were living normal life, going to weddings, going to funerals, get up, going to work, going in the evening to Harry's bar and grabbing a little drink, just living life. Amen. Okay? Before that day, it's going to be the same thing. Right. Yeah. People just... Busy living life, all right? Until what? Read. Until the day that Noah entered into the ark. Until the day, or my Bible said a certain day, okay? There was a certain day assigned for Noah to go into protection. Amen. 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 There was a day when Noah entered into the protection of Yahweh. And it was a day that was appointed, appointed, sorry, a certain day. Remember that in your mind. That day, a certain day, heaven and earth passing away, Noah. So Yahshua is telling you, go think of Noah if you want to know what I'm fixing to do. Read verse number 39. And knew not until the flood came and took them all away. Hold on. Remember the word flood and took them. Amen. Remember the word flood and swept away. Amen. And when he was swept away, only one family was left. One group was taken, another group was left. One group was taken into judgment, another group was left safe here on earth to rule and reign with Christ. Okay? Let's continue reading. Verse number uh, 39, Noah went into the ark of safety, but the sinners were what? Swept away. Taken. They were gone. Off the Bible said he will cleanse the earth in the end just like he did in the beginning with Noah. Amen. There will be no more wicked. That's why we sing about the millennial reign. When the wicked will cease from troubling, the weary will be at rest. There will be no more wickedness. All that was wicked. It's not the people, listen, 
the, at the coming of the Lord. It's not the people that's going to be swept away. It's the evil and the wicked, which is Satan himself. That wickedness will be taken from the earth. Hallelujah. Verse 40. Then, then. Somebody say then. then. See? When? After that day. Then, whenever that day happens, then there will be two. Read. Shall be two in the field, and one shall be taken, and the other left. Read. Two women shall be grinding at the one field. The one shall be taken and the other left. Now, Yahshua said, I'm comparing this to Noah. Who was taken in Noah's time? The wicked. The wicked. Who was left? The righteous. The righteous. Amen. Okay? Now, as we continue to read these verses, we assume that's talking about the rapture, and that means we're going to be taken, Amen. and the wicked's going to be left here on earth. Hallelujah. That's because you don't understand we're going to rule the earth. So if we're taken, who's going to rule the earth? Yeah. Every truth. Every truth. Taken and him being left. So he can keep his earth. Oh, that's just not the way it's going to go down. When I heard about the rapture, because for me it was new. Mm-hmm. Well, there you go. You already had a revelation. But I didn't know. You didn't know. Now you know. Ladies and gentlemen, if you get taken, who's going to rule the earth? That's why Satan created the rapture doctrine. So you would pray to get taken out of the way. If you don't lose that rapture mentality... That mentality says this, please get me out of here so he can have it. Take me to a better place. And Yahweh saying, no, 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 I need a witness in the earth. I need you to stay right there so you can establish my kingdom in Satan's dominion. Amen. The reason people believe in the rapture, and it's not their fault, Amen. they have no idea of a coming kingdom of Yahweh right. here on the earth. Yeah. Brother Nate, if Yahweh's, and I wish I could have talked today on the Jubilee, uh, one day I'll get to it. But when the Jubilee comes, which will be the day of the Lord, that'll be the 50th year, when the Jubilee comes and all of earth, did you know all their debts are going to be released immediately in the year of Jubilee? Do you understand that? Do you understand that? <laughs> and if you don't know Torah, you get it all messed up. That's why Yahweh has been bringing us back to Torah. Because if we don't know Torah, we mess up everything in the New Testament. And so... When you get that in your mind, wait a minute, I'm getting ready to govern the earth, but yet I'm leaving the earth. In the days of Noah, Sister Pask, it was the wicked that was taken. Go back to the beginning. If you want to know the end, go back to the beginning. Now, the person that was left... In Noah's day, Yahshua is comparing the whole thing to Noah. He's saying, as it was, the wicked were taken, the righteous was left in the ark. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, read verse 42 for me. Let's keep going and let's, we'll make it make more sense. Watch therefore. Therefore, I love that word, therefore. Therefore, because of what I've just told you, Yahshua said. Listen, read. For ye know not what hour your Lord will come. 
know this. No, here. He said, you may not know the hour, but here's what you better know. Read. That if the good men of the house had known and, and what watch the thief would come, he would have had watched and oh. would have. Hold on one second. Let me let me let me let me let me interject for a second. How many's ever heard of the secret rapture? Yes. It's gonna be a secret. Yahshua is literally destroying a secret rapture here. Amen. Amen. <laughs> he said, You may not know the exact moment of my return, because only my father knows that until he reveals it. But you better know this. Each one of these you it will not be a secret to you. Amen. He said, because if somebody called you, Brother Homrich, and said, Brother Homrich, at 3 o'clock in the morning, three burglars is coming to your house. Well, good. Tell them to come on. Tell them to come right on. Tell them to come right on. Because I know that he's coming, and I got three barrels ready for him. Okay? So you understand what Yahshua said is if the watchman of the house knew that he was coming... He would have never been caught by surprise. Amen. So all those doctrines that say you're going to be walking in the grocery store and all of a sudden, whew, it's surprise, secret rapture. Yahshua is teaching something totally different. Read what he said. geologists guided their camels into Egypt's western desert. Discovering that if the good of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched amidst this and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Some Your watchman. Colossal and feet long. That's why you're in this class right now. You're watching. You're being revealed to when he's coming. And this very scripture M, can you please tells you that if you'll watch, you won't be caught by surprise. Ever. Because he's going to reveal it to you right before he comes. What did he tell Noah? Right before the rain started, go ahead and get on in that boat, son. Because I do nothing without telling my people. That's why some of you have begun coming into this message. You're hearing the call to get in the boat. The call is going out all over the world. Come on in to the ark of safety. The old ark is moving. Why don't you come on in? That's the call that you're hearing. Go into safety. Because the ark is my commandment. It is my protection. Move into that place because I'm about to return. I'm not about to slip you out of here in some rapture. I'm about to return. I'm about to return on the seventh day. You know, just, I grew up in the church, uh, and I thank God for it, but I'm going to have to be honest with you. I, I probably heard 20,000 sermons in my life. Great ones get you, I mean, wonderful. But I never remember. Ever in the greatest churches, I, I never remember anyone telling me to prepare to rule and reign with Christ on the earth. Amen. Amen. Never. I never remember nobody telling me, uh, get ready to govern the nations of the world. This was a message that was not for their day. But we're beginning to know more and more. Nobody ever told me he's coming on the seventh day. Come on. That's right. We are really blessed. We're really blessed. Why? Because... We were told he could come any minute. No, he's coming on the seventh day. But just 20 years ago, they didn't know he was coming on the seventh. Well, amen. There was some that he was already revealing it to. But in the last 20 years, it's becoming widespread. The, the net's going farther. Yahweh is bringing in a people. If you would have told me 30 years ago, I know right when he's coming. I'd have said, get behind me, Satan. I'd have said, I'm not joining that cult. Right? But we do know when he's coming, the seventh day. It's that simple. Now, we don't know when that seventh day starts. But we know he's coming on the seventh day. But we did not know that just years ago. It is coming forth in a revelation to his people. What I taught you last night, he reveals it to get you ready and so that you'll begin to proclaim to the nations of the world what he is saying. Now, he said for them to stay awake for the hints of the coming of Christ. 
You can still stay awake even though you don't know. Noah did not know the day nor the hour either. Have you ever thought about it? Yahshua said it's just going to be like Noah's day. Do y'all know Noah? Did, Noah was working on a building. He had no idea when the rain was coming. But he knew an anointing had come on him to build a ministry, to build a work. Did you hear me? He knew. Nah, nah. He knew there was an anointing on him to build a work. Start working on the ministry. Work on this building. Because Noah, there's an anointing on you to build the work. Prepare to, you, because Noah, for uh, six months, I believe, he ruled over the earth. Amen. Amen. It was just him and his family of the remnant. Yep. Come on now. Right. It was just him and the few that were chosen, and they were above the earth, ruling and reigning over the earth. Hallelujah. Amen. And Pastor, when, when that rain started to come, he knew. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, you know. The, but, but not just when World War III starts to happen. When you begin to see the nations lining up against each other the way we're seeing now. When you begin to see the anger in the world. We're living in a time that our world's never been as angry as it is right now. Everybody's mad at everybody. Just, you don't believe me? Go drive right down that street. Go drive right down that street and, 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 and act like you're going to go around somebody or act like you're going to slow down. Act like you ain't going to. They'll, they'll, here's what they do. I'm like, dude, chill, bruh. It's going to be all right. The whole world's mad. Anger stirring up in the earth. This nation we're in is on the brink of civil war as I speak to you. In 2024, you'll find out this nation's on the brink of it. We're coming into a place now where we're seeing. We know what time it is. We don't want to get out of here. We want to get ready for our jobs that's about to come on the earth. I don't even want no rapture. I want a rupture of the kingdoms of darkness. Hallelujah. I don't want a rapture. I want a rupture of the kingdoms of darkness. Yahweh needs a witness. Why would Yahweh take his witnesses off the earth when he's got to have two witnesses? Amen. Verse 43. Forty-four. Sorry. Therefore, therefore, be ye also ready. Now, how can you be ready? Watch. Right. Read. For in such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man cometh. Now, did he say at an hour you think not the rapture happens? No. no. He said he comes. The coming of the Lord. This whole chapter is about the coming of the Lord. Yeah, yeah. So Has nothing to do with the rapture. Amen. Because the rapture is not the coming of the Lord. The rapture is the going of us. This whole chapter is about the coming of the Son of Man. Amen. Verse 45. Who then is a faithful and wise servant? Now listen to what Yahshua said. Right before I come, I'm going to start looking for faithful and wise servants. Amen. I want you to listen to this carefully. It's a revelation that came to me early this morning. He said... I'm going to, right before my return, go back to Noah. Right before the flood, I looked for a faithful and wise servant. Yes. Amen. That's what he's looking for right now. Amen. And read what he says about this faithful and wise servant. Whom his, Lord has, whom his Lord has made ruler over his household. Listen, I'm starting to look for the rulers Amen. that's going to rule over all my creation. I'm looking for the rulers right now. Before I return, I'm going to start calling the rulers to come in and get ready for the rain. Amen. Hallelujah. Read. Not just the R-A-I-N, but the R-E-I-G-N. Amen. The R-E-I-G-N. Before the rain begins. Training. Training. Amen. Amen, Elder. Read that. 
to give them meat in due season. Now hold on. I'm going to give these faithful and wise servants meat of revelation in due season. I believe it's due season. Why is he looking for rain, rulers right now? Because he's getting ready to unleash some meat that your grandmother didn't have. And you know, I tell you what, hallelujah. There are times when this message troubles me because I know the people that was before me did not understand these things. And the enemy tries to tr play with my mind. Well, if they didn't need all this understanding, you don't need it either. But then I read a verse that said right before Yahshua returns, he's going to find some people to give some new meat to for due season. New word, new revelation. And what are we going to do with that meat read? Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Verily I say unto you, that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. Yes, all his creation. All of the earth. Does anybody see a rapture yet? Anywhere? I'm looking for one. This is all about the restoration of all things. This is about the jubilee. This is about those men that are going to take meat and feed in due season. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you when that's going to happen. When the rain starts and trouble comes, it will be you that feeds the earth the law of God in due season and jubilee. Glory! Hallelujah. The master finds his servant doing when he returns. Now let's read verse 48. But, and if the evil servant shall say in his heart, My, my Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to smite his fellow servants, and to eat and drink with the drunken. He said, here's what's going to happen. Before I return, it'll be just like Noah. I will have lazy servants. That one translation calls them lazy. Amen. They will say, "We're just waiting on the rapture. We just we paying we paying uh, we paying trip. However, it all works out fine with me." Lazy servants. When you hear somebody say, I don't get into no debate about all that, that's because you can't debate it. You don't know what you believe. Well, I'm not going to get into all that. That's because you're not watching. That's because this is all a joke to you. That's because you don't understand your job in the kingdom of God. So therefore, you just pan trip. Well, that ain't no different than a pansexual. That means you don't know what you are. The only people that's not studying this is those that are not watching. That's right. We study end time events in this ministry so that we can put a watch on what God is doing in the earth today. Amen. I want to know when a new king gets on the throne of, of Great Britain. I want to know about the next president. I want to know what God is doing. Because I'm a watcher for mine to get in the boat. And then you've got some poor pitiful Christians that will say, well, I'm not worried about all that politics and what have you and what not. I'm just going to try to make heaven my home. My dear friend, don't talk like that. How dare you be a lazy Christian? Don't you know that the thrones of this world are about to be given to you and you don't care about the government of this world? That's lazy Christians. I don't know when it's going to happen, but how are you going to know when to get in the boat? 
how you going to know that it's time? Because God works in mysterious ways. But I'm going to tell you one thing. He said, before I return, I'm going to find faithful stewards that's going to give meat to my people. He said, but when I find one that don't want to give meat to the people, they want to go in a rapture. They don't want to serve the nations. That's like that little woman in the Song of Solomon. She didn't want to serve the other. She wanted to stay right there with Jesus in bed. Anybody remember? Shulamite woman. She wanted in Solomon's bed, but she got mad when she found out Solomon had friends. He wanted her to serve. That's what Christians are doing today. They don't want to serve humanity. When you talk about ruling and reigning, they, they want to rule and run. They want to run to heaven. We got a job. We are training for our job. Our job's to give meat in due season. And that due season is almost now. And it's so sad. The message we're preaching is the only message I find in the scriptures. And yet I get ridiculed from north, south, east, and west Amen. for preaching this message. Amen. That's how you know you're preaching the truth. When, when they hear me preach, they say I'm bringing some new message. No, darling, this is as old as dirt, literally. Amen. Literally. Amen. This is the restored message that God is restoring in the end times. I want to show you, uh, was that 48? That's 49. Uh, I, I'm looking for a particular verse. Read the next one, maybe. I don't know, maybe. Go to 51. Read all the way through 51. The Lord of 50 51. Where is that 50? Yeah, read it. The Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him, and in an hour that he is not aware of. Now, not, not every servant, that servant. Which one? The lazy one. To the lazy servant, this is all going to be a surprise. You know why? They don't come to meetings like this. They'd rather go to camp. They'd rather go to camp meeting and get shouting. They could care less about these kind of teachings. They just want somebody to come lay hands on them. They want to roll in the floor, and that's all right. If y'all want to do a roll, I will love you. I'll roll with you if I can get up afterwards. <laughs> What does a lazy Christian sound like? One that says, well, whatever happens, happens. If it be the Lord's will, that whatever happens, happens. No, ma'am. you got to know what's going to happen, how it's going to happen, so you can be there when it happens. Amen. Get your eyes on this, what God's saying, read. And shall cut him asunder. Now, what's he going to do with this servant? Cut him off from the first resurrection. He's cutting him off from the government. If that, if that man would have been serving meat in due season, he wouldn't be cut off. Notice what's going to happen to this believer when he gets cut off. Read. And appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now, Here's what it said. Those lazy Christians, they've got a place appointed. They're going to be taken away and put somewhere else with the hypocrites. Amen. One shall be taken and one will be left. That lazy Christian will be taken and appointed to another place with the hypocrites. Amen. One will be taken to another place. Read that verse again. Find out what happens to this lazy believer. He will be taken. Read. Then shall two be in the field. No, I'm go back to uh, 50, 51. I'm going to cut him asunder and do what? I'm going to appoint him another place with the hypocrite. With the hypocrites. He's moving from the kingdom and taken away and being appointed another location, another place with the hypocrites. Now, in that place, what did it say? We'll be weeping. Read that about weeping. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Where at? In that place. 
that outer court, that, that 30-fold believer court, that court to where they were so glad to be saved, they didn't want to study the end time. They didn't want to know when he was coming. They said, que sera, sera. Those people are not worthy. The Bible said any man that puts his hand to the plow and looks back is not worthy of the kingdom of God. They will be cut off and appointed another place, taken away from the bride, taken away from Noah's family, taken away from the remnant, and moved to another place. Amen. Now, of course, people have always asked me, what does that mean, gnashing of teeth? That is not hell. Why do we assume things when we're weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth is a Hebrew euphemism for outside the city. If you were to go to Jerusalem 2,000 years ago, Brother Denny, come 4 o'clock in the evening, 5 o'clock, Sun's going down. You out in the middle of the desert. Jackals. Foxes. Every animal out that you can imagine. And guess what? No street lights. Black as an ace of spades. You can look up there and see Jerusalem. Lights everywhere. But you're not up there. You're out here where there's weeping and wailing and fear, gnashing of teeth, because you're outside the protection of the city. Listen to me. That believer is going to be taken from the city of God, which is the new Jerusalem, the bride, and put in another place where there's fear and trembling because they did not make it in the first resurrection. Amen. Now I'd like to prove it to you even further. Let's go to Matthew 22 and 13. I'm almost done today. Matthew 22 and 13. Uh, we're going to find out what happens to these believers. They do not go to hell. They just don't go in the ark. They're taken away with the flood. Read. Then said the king, to the servants. Bind him. Bind the servant. Where was the servant? He was in the castle. But he says, now we're going to bind the servant and do what with him? Hand and foot and take him away. Take, did you say take away? One will be taken. Is that what you said? One will be taken. Take him away and put him into outer, put him in another place. And cast him into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. In other words, he was in the castle. Then he was found unworthy. One was left in the castle, and one was taken away. There are many in this ministry that have been left, and there's others that have been taken away. And count it among the hypocrites. That's right. That's what the Bible says. This is an ark of safety. And those wolves will take you out of this ark of safety. You will be taken away. And when you don't understand that, then what happens is you become fodder for the wolves. Read Matthew 25, verse 10. I'm showing you how in every parable it talks about taking away. The wicked, the lazy. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. Now this is the foolish virgins. Here's what you need to know about the virgins. They were all virgins. They were all dressed in white. They were all getting married. These are not sinners and saints. This is saints and saints. This is not sinners, bad, this is not bad people. The foolish virgins were spirit-filled people, just not enough spirit. They ran out of spirit. They ran out of oil. In, in uh, Matthew 24 and 40 and 41, the first two verses we read, it just struck me that it said, two women shall be granted. Amen. And, and the virgins, the, the, the churches, the churches that are women, 
two of these women, that was revelation you just got right there. See, that was revelation. Amen. See? All you see is two women. But remember what is in the book of Revelation. Babylon is a woman and so is the bride. Remember that. Jerusalem. New Jerusalem. There will be one woman that don't make it. She's got to be taken away. Here's the foolish virgins. Church folk. Anybody remember what I've taught you the scariest verse in the Bible is? Anybody remember? There you go. Scariest verse in the Bible. Lord, Lord, we had so much Holy Ghost that we cast out devils. Now, brothers, the Bible said, Sister Schumer, that no man can cast out a devil except he has the Spirit of God. So these are spirit-filled believers. This is not sinners. This is Holy Ghost-filled believers. And they said, we healed the sick in your name. We didn't do it in Satan's name. We didn't do it. We, we represented you and your power. We had your authority. We did all of that. And he looks at them and he says, well, unfortunately, depart from me. you got to be taken away. Depart. One was left. One was taken away. He said, depart from me because I never knew you. Oh, what do you mean you didn't know me? I went to Calvary and confessed you were my Lord, confessed you was my Savior. He said, I know you did. I remember. I, I see everything. He said, but here's the problem me and you have. You don't know me. Because if you knew me, you would know I was the Torah in the Amen. flesh. Amen. You thought I was just your Savior instead of your Master. See, you didn't know me. You thought I was your blood sacrifice without being your reigning king. You didn't know me. He said, and the reason I need you to be taken away from me is because you're a worker of iniquity. The word iniquity means lawless. He said, you had so much Holy Ghost that you allowed them to convince you that my Torah was done away with. You had no law. And therefore, we can't walk together. you got to be taken away. Amen. One will be left. One will be taken. You didn't believe in holiness. You believed in halfliness. You didn't believe the preacher could tell you what to do. But you didn't know that preacher was me in the flesh. He was the word in the flesh. Just like I was. I'll give you pastors after my own heart. Oh, look at the tears flowing down that face. Shanda da bokosha. Hallelujah. Rebe keshe o namahaya. Thank you, my Lord, for your convicting God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. I told him on the way here, I said, there's nothing more precious in my life than knowing the name Yahweh and Yeshua. Hallelujah. Nothing more precious. You got to know him as more than your Savior. Amen. What was that parable in Luke 19? They sent a message to him, said, we don't want you to reign over us. You can save us, but we don't want you to reign over us. I want you all to hear me. Because I just said a mouthful about the man of God. Yahweh said, I will appoint pastors in the end time after my own heart. They will feed you meat in due season. And when you make a statement like, ain't no preacher going to tell me what to do, then who is? I'm being real. I don't care if it's me or another preacher. Who is? Well, I studied the Bible for myself and look at the mess she was in. You know, that scripture is what broke me. When the one about you work of iniquity, I don't know you. When I realized those are the people that are the pastors. Those are the leaders. Amen. They're the ones laying hands. That's right. You're right. It's not the congregation. No, ma'am. And when I realized it was the whole top part of the ministry, it's like, I'm in a mess. Amen. 
Amen. That, that's the scripture that broke me. They'll be taken away. Where will they be taken to? Well, if you listen to my sermon last Sabbath morning at the Bible study, I begin to teach you about the lake of fire, the judgment of God, the refining of God. These people are not going to hell. But see, they skipped the fire that you willingly jumped into. They got to go through it too. Brother Vaughn, what do you mean we're suffering? I'll tell you. Every time you sit down to a plate of shrimp. Guilty. That lake of fire. Every time you want that, what the word says you, you can't have. You're in a lake of fire. Every time you want to run somebody down and you got this fire telling you call them and make it right, that's the lake of fire. Every time you go through that, you're going through the lake of fire. You are in the divine judgment, the left hand of Yahweh. And these people said that they didn't have to go through that because they were saved already. Yes, Take them away. I'll deal with them in a thousand years, I'm looking for the faithful servant yes. that said, I surrendered not only to your spirit, yes. but to your Torah. I submitted to your word. Hallelujah. I lived what you told me to live. Hallelujah. Everybody else Amen. taken away. Finish that about the five foolish virgins so I can let them go home. While they went to buy, the bridegroom, bridegroom come, and they that were ready went, went in with him to the marriage and the door was shut. The ark of the, this is the ark. Do y'all not see the days of Noah? We're back in the ark. The door was shut. The story never changes, Elder Morgan. Only the characters do. Do y'all not see? Same thing. It's all, your whole Bible's a repeat from, 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 it's the same story. David and Goliath is all through the, it's every, that foolish virgin was a church member. And the Bible said they went in the ark. The door was shut. What happened to the other five virgins, Sister Missy? Taken away. One will be left. One will be taken. Now, brothers and sisters, what I have done for you today is exegeted the whole chapter. I didn't let you take two verses out. And act like you know what you're talking about. Amen. We can't do that. Amen. And if you love truth, you'll love the man that brings it to you. Amen. Here's why. Because this ain't easy. This ain't easy. This ain't easy. It's not easy to go against everything we've ever been taught. It's not easy. I can have a church of a thousand people with mine and my wife's preaching skills and music skills if I was willing to compromise. Amen. But I learned that somebody's going to get left and it ain't going to be me. Hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. If there's anything I can do about it, hallelujah. hallelujah. Let's finish up with Matthew 25, 46. That'll be our last verse and then we'll go home. Matthew 25, 46. And he shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. Okay. The wicked is going into punishment. By the way, that word everlasting, don't get messed up in your head. Next Sabbath, I'm going to teach you the difference in everlasting and eternal, the Hebrew words. But he said the goats and the sheep, the goats are going into punishment. They, they're being taken away. The lambs will do exactly what I said in my word. The meek are going to inherit the earth. The wicked are going to be moved away from that government and to punishment until they learn what the lambs had to learn. <coughs> the righteous inherit the earth. So if anybody ever tells you, as I close out, I don't want to be left behind, tell them I do. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to be left behind because I've got a promise. Amen. Well, y'all look so worn out. I'm so sorry. Bless your hearts. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Hallelujah. To Yahweh be the glory. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Sister, hallelujah. Thank y'all for hanging out with us today. Truth is a beautiful thing. Let's sing a little song before we go home. <clears throat> Praise the name of Yah. I'm going to ask you to do a homework assignment. Send this teaching to anyone you know of that believes in the rapture and let them tear it apart. Let them prove where I'm wrong and I'll come back and do a follow-up and admit it. Amen. Uh, just tell them you got a challenge. Would you listen to this and tell me where my pastor's wrong? on this because he wants to know amen. amen hallelujah but I can promise you they're gonna go dead quiet like radio like 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 my dad just reminded me of this song we sung growing up but he just changed the word for the first time in his life all right left behind forever All right. We used to sing with no hope for it. Now we sing with all hope. Yeah. For return. Yeah. Looking back. I just forgot the rest. Okay, we'll have to make up words as usual. Left behind. We got the idea. In other words, the old song was you don't want to be left behind. No, we've had to change, <clears throat> we've had to change the words of so many of the songs oh, gosh. that we used to sing. And we'll start singing a song and realize the theology's wrong and have to change it on the fly, literally, while we're singing. Like this one, see. Let's do this before we go. Some glad morning. When this life is over, I'll rule and reign. When this life is over, when this body's changed, I'll rule and reign. I'll rule and reign, oh glory, I'll rule and reign. When this life is over, when this body's changed, I'll rule and reign. For I'll rule and reign, oh glory, I'll rule and reign. When this life is over, when this body's changed, I'll rule and reign. Well, it's just a few more. Weary days and then I'll rule and reign right here on earth where joy will never end. I'll rule and reign. Oh, I'll rule and reign, oh glory. I'll rule and reign when this life is over. When this body's changed, I'll rule and reign. Well, some glad morning, when this life is over, I'll rule and reign. To a home where God shall ever roam, oh, I'll rule and reign. Sing it if you believe it. Change. Oh, let's do 
final time. Well, I rule and reign, oh glory. I rule and reign when this life, when this life is over, or when this body's changed. I rule and reign. the Lord. Yahweh bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you. Hallelujah. You are dismissed. We'll see you tomorrow at one o'clock at the aquarium. Y'all bless you. Play it again. Well, I love you, family. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, glory, glory. Hallelujah. hallelujah, that was an amazing thing. Amazing thing. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. When this body is that was a big Shabbat Shalom. Oh, 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 Love you guys. Love you, Pastor. Love you, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor. Blessing, blessing, blessing. Thank you, sir. Pray for some church now. Hallelujah. God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pastor's just getting warmed up. He's ready to preach it now. <laughs> I think he's ready to dance. I'm ready to listen. Great teaching today, Pastor. Wow. He's gone. <laughs> that was a mind, mind blower. Oh, oh. wasn't it awesome? Yeah, it's always, it's always awesome. Boy, he just shot the pants off the uh, ba Baptist, didn't he? <laughs> oh, yes, yeah. sister. Oh, yes. Off of everybody. <laughs> The church I went to before I came to this one is um did not did not